Okay, I'm going to outline some of the unique features of the Cinestar gimbal. Um, just for the people that haven't worked with a gimbal like this before, uh, a lot of times when customers first get to get this, they're a little bit confused because it does it is so adjustable, and there's so many different features that you can't adjust. Um, basically, because of the tube and clamp design, um, pretty much everything is adjustable. Like like we said earlier, this angle here between this forward fork and the vertical vertical arm, that's adjustable. So you could potentially you know, let's say you have a you have a request from a client to shoot with a bigger camera than normal, and you're thinking, "Oh man, how's this going to fit my gimbal?" You can you can take and lower this down to give you more headroom um, if you need it. Then this camera plate is adjustable too. So I'm going to show you. You know, when I shoot with the 5D, I have this thing set up roughly like this because the 5D is such a short camera. You don't need much clearance in the back for it. Um, whereas the FS100. From, it's a Sony camera if you're not familiar with it, it's really long. Um, you need much more clearance between the back of the camera and the, the back part of the gimbal in order to be able to look straight down. So when I fly with that one, I'll actually take and set it up so the central point is like this, rotate that camera plate so that's level, and all of a sudden you have a, you know, with very minor adjustment, you have a camera gimbal that's giving you a lot more extra room back here. So you have you know, you have room to plug in your AV inputs, you have room to be, be able to tilt straight down with the FS100, which, you know, it's a fairly large camera. Um, so the, I think that's one of the best features about this gimbal is just how adjustable and how configurable it is. There's a lot of different ways that you can, that you can set it up. Um, another thing I like is, like I mentioned earlier, the pot on the potentiometer on tilt axis is a continuous rotation pot. So. When you're setting things up on the bench, you, you can't damage that pot. There's no mechanical system that you can damage. Um, the pots also are directly coupled to both axes. So this gives really, really good feedback information to whatever flight control system you're using or what kind of gimbal stabilization you're using, um, whether it's the MK board, pick locks, uh, anything like that. The, the roll axis is directly, the roll axis potentiometer is directly coupled to roll axis. This allows for very fast and accurate corrections on roll, which to me have always been one of the most important things in filming. So you can have nice level horizons when, when you have a shot that dictates it. That, that's one thing that absolutely drives me nuts is horizons that are getting out of level. Um, one other, in the, in the area of adjustability, another interesting thing that we've done with this gimbal is we've actually made it so that you can top mount cameras. Um, I've got our red Epic right here, and this is set up with a this is set up with a Nikon 20 millimeter prime right now. This is a super lightweight configuration that we fly it in, um, and you can actually just take this arm, set it up so that is your new neutral point, and we actually just come in here and we mount the we mount the Epic right to the gimbal like that. And what this does is uh, it allows you to have this huge camera, which we, in the past, were only able to fly with our big helicopter, but it allows you to have this huge camera and a very compact vertically gimbal. You don't have a bunch of structure underneath the camera, underneath, uh, underneath the camera hanging down below the aircraft. So you have a really compact package that makes it easier to work with. Um, and you know, it actually allows us to fly the Epic on these small multi-rotors, which something I thought six months ago would, would have been absolutely impossible. And it uh, is working great.